Hello and welcome to the Keqing Show. I am Dr. Poonam Nigam and this is lecture 19 in the series of process calculations. Um, this video mainly deals with extent of reaction but uh, before starting extent of reaction I will just quickly uh, uh, revise what we had done last time. So we had left with fractional conversion and where I told you that not all reactions they go to completion. So even if you have a limiting reactant, it will not be reacted completely and some amount of it will still be present in the reactor effluent. So we define a term which is known as fractional conversion, which is ratio of moles reacted to moles fed. So that gives an idea how many moles have reacted. So fractional conversion is denoted by F and calculated as moles reacted divided by moles fed. And the fraction unreacted is then 1 minus F. Percentage conversion is given by 100 F. So if 20 mole of a reactant is fed and percentage conversion is 80%, then uh, find the number of moles reacted and unreacted. Of course, your fractional conversion is 0.8. So moles reacted will be 0.8 times 20, that is 16 moles. And moles unreacted will be fraction unreacted multiplied by the moles fed. Okay, so this was a simple problem which we took last time. So, uh, based on whatever concepts we had developed in the last video, um, I'm going to take a problem which is, deals with the hydrogenation of acetylene. So, uh, suppose we are charging a batch reactor with 20 kilomoles of acetylene, 50 kilomoles of hydrogen, and 50 kilomoles of ethane. Now, uh, after some point of time, it is said that 30 kilomoles of hydrogen has reacted. Okay, now based on this information, several questions have been asked which require the knowledge of whatever we have seen in the last video that is lecture number 18. Okay, so what which reactant is limiting? We know that the reactant is limiting if it is present in a uh, amount which is less than its stoichiometric proportion. So let's first check out what is the stoichiometric ratio of acetylene to hydrogen. According to this reaction, it is 1 by 2, that is 0 0.5. What is the actual ratio of acetylene to hydrogen in the feed? That is 20 kilomoles divided by 50, that is 0.4. So, acetylene is present in an amount which is less than the stoichiometric ratio of um, acetylene to hydrogen. That means, um, to react completely with acetylene, you do not have um, to react completely with hydrogen, you do not have sufficient amount of acetylene. So, your acetylene is the limiting reactant and hydrogen is the reactant in excess. Okay. So, if hydrogen is in excess, find the percentage excess of hydrogen in the feed. Now, uh, how do you find it? First of all, based on this uh, limiting reactant, which is acetylene, I have to find out how much hydrogen is required to completely react with that much of acetylene. So you have 20 kilomoles of acetylene. One mole reacts with two moles of hydrogen. So 20 moles of acetylene will react with 40 moles of um, hydrogen. But the actual feed contains 50 kilomole. So the fractional excess of hydrogen is uh, 50, that is the amount which is fed, minus the stoichiometric requirement divided by the stoichiometric requirement. So, this is 10 by 40 equal to 0.25 or the percentage excess of hydrogen is 25%. Okay. What is the fractional conversion of hydrogen? Now, hydrogen which is fed is 50 kilomoles, reacted is 30. Fractional conversion is simply reacted divided by fed, that is equal to 0.6 or 60%. Okay, now how much of each species is present when 30 kilomole of hydrogen has reacted? So, to start with, uh, 30 kilomoles of hydrogen has reacted and we had 50 kilomoles initially. So, the uh, hydrogen which is present at the end of the reaction will be 20 kilomoles. Now, uh, how much of acetylene has reacted? For um, one mole of, uh, for two moles of hydrogen reacting, you have uh, one mole of acetylene which is reacting. So, for 30 kilomoles, you will have 15 kilomoles of acetylene which is reacting. Okay. Initially, 20 kilomoles were present. So, finally, because 15 kilomoles have reacted, so you are left with 5 kilomoles of acetylene. Now, for each mole of hydrogen which is reacting, you form one mole of ethane. Okay. So, for 30 kilomoles of hydrogen which is reacting, you will form 15 kilomoles of 
ethane so um, initially we had 50 kilo moles of ethane which were already present so final concentration will be 65 kilo mole but one thing i'm taking this um, example just to point out one fact that the amount um, of reactant which has reacted or the amount of project product which has been formed it is directly proportional to the stoichiometric coefficient see the stoichiometric coefficient of hydrogen was 2 and the stoichiometric coefficient of acetylene was 1 so uh, hydrogen is uh, being consumed twice uh, than the acetylene okay so this leave, uh, leads us, uh, leads us to a conclusion that the number of moles reacted or produced is directly proportional to the stoichiometric coefficient. Now, I don't want to talk separately about reactants and products. I will, in general, talk about any species. So, for in general, for any species, I'm going to write that the change in number of moles is directly proportional to the stoichiometric coefficient. Okay. Now, let's see what is the change in the number of moles. So, let's say initial number of moles of any species is Ni0 and final number of moles is Ni. Then, the change in the number of moles of any species I is final minus initial. So, my change in number of moles is given by Ni minus Ni0 and that is directly proportional to the stoichiometric coefficient of that species that is nu i. Okay. Now again consider this reaction. Okay. Uh, suppose, okay, we had 30 kilo moles of hydrogen which was reacting. Okay. So the change in number of moles of hydrogen was minus 30. If I divide this minus 30 by its stoichiometric coefficient which is minus 2, I end up with a number which is 15. Similarly, the change in the number of moles of acetylene was minus 15. If I divide it by minus 1, that is its stoichiometric coefficient, again I land up with a number which is 15. You can check for the product also, you get a number which is equal to 15. So we see that if we divide the change in the number of moles by the stoichiometric coefficient, you get some constant for the reaction. Okay, and this is known as the extent of reaction zeta. This is uh, referred to as zeta. This is a Greek symbol. Okay, so let's see what value zeta can take. Okay, so first of all, we will see that the um, unit of zeta is moles or kilomoles because stoichiometric coefficient doesn't have any unit. Uh, to start, uh, when the reaction has not proceeded to any extent, then the initial number of moles is equal to the final number of moles because there has been no change. So, change in the number of moles is 0. So, at the start of the reaction, your zeta is equal to 0. Now, uh, when the reaction is proceeded to such an extent that the change in the number of moles is equal to the stoichiometric coefficient. Uh, what I'm talking about is that one mole of acetylene has reacted with two moles of hydrogen to give me one mole of ethane. When uh, this has taken place, that is the change in the number of moles is equal to the stoichiometric coefficient. Then we say that one mole of reaction um, has taken place. Okay. And at that time, zeta is equal to 1. So keep this in mind, this terminology. If I say one mole of a reaction is set to take place, that means that the change in the number of moles of each species is equal to its stoichiometric coefficient. And at that time, zeta is equal to 1. Okay. So if you have continuous process, we will follow the same definition except that uh, now I have uh, N10 that will be my inlet flow rate and N1 will be the outlet uh, molar flow rate of species. Okay, species 1. So similar way, it's nothing difficult to understand. Now what is important is if this equation is rearranged, so I can write final number of moles in terms of initial number of moles plus zeta. Okay, so if I know zeta I can ca and I know the initial number of moles, then I can calculate the final number of moles of each of the species which is present. Basically, how is zeta calculated? We again use this equation only. For one of the components, we know what is the final number of moles which are present. Like last time we said that uh, Ni minus Ni0 for hydrogen was 30 kilo moles. So, we could have calculated zeta from that information. So, you know one uh, information about one of the species Okay, from that you calculate zeta and then after calculating zeta, then you can calculate uh, the final number of moles of uh, the remaining species. Okay, now I can write this equation for all the species and if I add up all these equations, then I 
get something like this this summation ni is the uh, total number of moles which are present in the final state this is the total number of moles present at the initial state and summation mu i is the summation of all these stoichiometric coefficients it is calculated something like this um, we see that a stoichiometric coefficient of uh, c2 h2 is minus 1 h2 is minus 2 and c2h6 is 1 so i'm just adding 1 minus 2 minus 1 so summation mu i which is referred to as nu is calculated as minus 2 for this reaction very straightforward just add all the stoichiometric coefficients okay so we got this equation that gives you the final number of moles and what is the this this is the final number of moles of ith component so if i divide ni by n what do i get Moles of the species divided by the total number of moles that gives you the mole fraction. Okay. So, if I know zeta then and the initial number of moles, I should be able to calculate the mole fraction of all the species um, which are coming out in the product stream or if it is a batch reactor then in the final state. Okay. So, zeta is a very uh, useful information. If you know that then you can easily calculate the compositions. Fine. Now, based on this, I am going to take a problem that is oxidation of ethylene. Uh, the reaction is given like this and the feed to a reactor contains 100 kilo moles of ethylene and oxygen. Okay. So, first question is which reactant is limiting? Let's find out. So, first of all, I am going to calculate what is the stoichiometric ratio of ethylene to oxygen. So, it is 2 is to 1. Actual ratio of, uh, of ethylene to oxygen which is used is 100 divided by 100 that is 1. So acetylene uh, sorry ethylene is present um, in an amount which is rest less than its stoichiometric ratio. So ethylene is the limiting reactant and oxygen is in excess. Okay. Now what is then the percentage excess of the other reactant? This we have done previously also. So quickly we will see stoichiometric requirement of oxygen for uh, 100 kilo moles of ethylene which is the limiting reactant so 2 moles require 1 mole 100 moles will require 50 moles of oxygen so stoichiometric requirement is 50 actually fed is 100 so fractional excess will be uh, fed minus stoichiometric requirement divided by stoichiometric requirement so this comes out to be 1 or the percentage excess of oxygen is 100 percent Okay, now uh, I'm just putting this equation again so that it's easy for you to compute the other problems. So, if the reaction proceeds to completion, how much of ethylene oxide will be formed? Okay, so it's very easy. If 100 moles, uh, 100 kilomoles of ethylene uh, reacts completely, then 100 kilomoles of ethylene oxide will be formed. Okay, second question is how much of the excess reactant will be left because 100 moles is reacting with 50 moles. So, remaining 50 will be left. Okay, what is the extent of reaction? Now, let's see. Extent of reaction, we have this basic equation. I have that finally because everything is reacted away, it's going to completion. So, final number of moles for ethylene is 0. Initial was 100. Uh, stoichiometric coefficient is minus 2. If I put everything in equation, I calculate zeta as 50 kilomoles. So, my extent of reaction is 50 kilomoles. Now, let's see this question. Uh, now, the feed to the reactor contains 100 kilomoles and whatever it remains same. But now, the fractional conversion of the limiting reactor is reactant is 50%. How much of each reactant and product is present at the end and what is the extent of reaction? Fine. So, fractional conversion version is 0.5 so what is fed is 100 kilomoles but since only half of it is reacting so 50 kilomoles is reacting 50 kilomoles is left behind so initially so what, what i have zeta that is equal to final minus initial that is the number change in the number of moles divided by the stoichiometric coefficient it gives me my extent of reaction that is 25 kilomoles using this information i'm going to find out what are the final numbers of oxygen and ethylene oxide simple 100 minus 25 70 kilomole initially no ethylene oxide is present so 0 plus 25 that is 25 kilomoles okay now 
uh, what it says if the reaction proceeds to a point where 60 kilo mole of oxygen is left what is the fractional conversion of c2h4 and the fractional conversion of oxygen in the extent of reaction okay so oxygen pre present at the end is 60 kilo moles oxygen fed is 100 so extent of reaction is 60 minus 100 divided by minus 1 that is 40 kilo moles i can use this to find out the final concentration final amounts of oxygen and ethylene oxide but we are interested in finding out the fractional conversion so you can calculate it like this um, so thanks a lot for watching and please subscribe to my channel